So CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete, which are the four basic functions of persistent storage of items. Generally, an API exposes routes to execute these functions on a specified item or a list of items, allowing the users to directly manipulate the data that they have access to. And today we will be building such a system that enables the users to create, read, update and delete from a collection of dog breeds in our database. And with the help of Nest.js, we're going to be able to do this in under 10 minutes. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding tutorials every week just like the one that you're about to watch. So if you enjoy it, please leave a like down below and let's get started. Now, like you see on the documentation, Nest is a framework for building efficient, scalable Node.js server side applications. And then under the hood, it makes use of robust HTTP server frameworks like Express that we all know and love. Now, one point to notice is that Nest.js documentation is by far one of the best I've ever seen. Besides getting over the overview of what it is able to do, it also has documentation on fundamentals that you can use, techniques to implement on your application, a specific section just for security of your app, how to implement GraphQL, WebSockets, microservices, which Nest.js makes easy to use. And that's why it's my go-to for server-side applications in Node.js. Now, firstly, we can go into the first steps to see how we can set it up. The first step is to run npm install globally of the Next.js CLI, which I've already done before. But if I haven't, I would just type that command directly here. Now, once CLI is installed, you can create a new Nest project by just running Nest new dog API, which is the name of our application. We're gonna let this run for a bit, answer a couple questions. We're gonna use npm for this project and we are all set. Now just to run our Nest app, we can go into the directory that it created, which is dog API and run npm run start. Now this is gonna fire up our server and we can open up Safari back on and go into localhost 3000, which is where our app is running. And you can see that it runs when you get an hello world back on the main index route. Okay, so now let's update the code that we have. So I'm gonna run code dot to open VS code in this directory and let's go from here. So what does Nest.js install by default? You have a source folder, which is where our code is gonna be and it has an entry point, which is main.ts where it creates your Nest app listening on port 3000. App is created using the app module, which is just a class that, that is defined here according to the module that Next.js exports. What this module has is imports of other modules. If you want to use other modules, then it has the controllers for your app and the providers of your app. In this case, we just have one controller and one service. We're going to keep it simple like this. The controller is the one responsible for receiving the requests and propagating that request into the correct service. In this case, it has only one route defined, which is the get route, and it just returns the app service function get hello, returning the string. So if you can change this function, you can say hello from Nest.js, for example. I hit save, and then in our browser, we can just refresh the page, and this is the return that we got. This can be anything. It can be an object, it can be an image, anything that you want. Okay, so now to the part of creating our API in five minutes. Now with the Nest CLI, you have a couple of commands that you can do. So if you type nest dash dash help, it's gonna list all the commands that you can perform with the CLI. Now we've already used new to create our, this API. We then run start on the NPM run start. And we have a couple more that we're not gonna use for now. The one we want to take close attention to is this one, this generate command or G for short. The generate command takes a couple of parameters afterwards. And in this case, what we want to build is a resource. Now, typically a resource refers to a schema of an object that's going to be used in an app. So in our app that we are creating, our resource is going to be dogs or dog breeds. In this case, just breeds or it could be users as another resource. And this is the greatest part of our, about the next CLI. So if I just run nest G for generate resource, 
it is gonna ask me for the name of my resource that it should enter in plural. So I'm gonna type in breeds. We're gonna be using a REST API, a normal REST API. And we're gonna say, this is a, the important part, is asking me if I would like to generate the CRUD entry points. And I'm gonna just press enter because the default is yes. And this is where all the magic has happened. If I now go back to VS Code, you can see that inside sources, I have a new folder called breeds. This is our resource. It creates a couple of things. DTOs and entities, we're gonna cover that later in our Nest.js series tutorials. But what we want to actually look at is, let me expand this. I wanna look at this. So this has the same structure as the app module. Most modules are gonna have this structure. It's gonna have the module itself, which is gonna import the controllers and the services that it needs. The controller in itself, the same structure as before, except that our controller decorator has a string breeds, has a parameter. So now our app has an extra endpoint and it starts with breeds. Then automatically also define our post endpoint or get endpoint or get with uh, an ID parameter, put and delete all of the endpoints that we need to make CRUD happen, we got them. So let's try this out. So now if you go back to our browser, this was the main entry point. But if we now type in breeds, now we hit a different controller, right? Because this controller has defined that its entry point is on breeds. So it's slash breeds directly. But one limitation of the browsers is that on browser windows, you can make only get requests. So you cannot post or put or delete. So we cannot use our other, the other HTTP methods to trigger all our functions. So for that, I use Postman. So you've probably heard about Postman before. It's one of the most known uh, applications for API development or API testing. And it's gonna enable you to make all the other types of requests to your APIs. So I've already installed it. But if you haven't installed it, you can just create it. You can have an account and then it's gonna take you back to downloads. So once you have Postman installed, you can just fire it up. And this is what you're gonna see. Let's try first to create a request, the same request that we are doing on our browser. So it's a get request. You select get right here and enter HTTP localhost 3000 slash breeds. And we got exactly the same results. So we got a get request to our API. Now let's see what other methods we have right here. We have a get with a parameter. So it's slash something. And th this slash is going to be converted for an ID so that you can then use it here, extract it from the, the request and pass it to the function below for the service. So right here, if I enter breed slash two, this is going to be the ID. And it's going to return me. This action returns a number two breed. Why does it do that? Because if you go back to the function that is responsible for handling the request, all it does is return a string with our ID right here. Now the same thing goes for the put HTTP method, the delete method, and it's gonna just proxy back to the functions in the service. So now for the fun part, which is actually using a database to control our modules. So Nest.js makes it really easy by covering it in the documentation. So if you go to the techniques section, and clicking on Mongo. This is how you can use Mongoose to serve as an ORM between your database. So I'm gonna copy this command, go back to the terminal and install it. Okay, so what you can see here, the first part is to connect to the database. You do that in the module. So we're gonna copy this line right here and then just import it. So now we're connected to our localhost at nest database, which is a database we don't yet have, but we're gonna create it afterwards. So this is gonna assume that you already have MongoDB installed in your machine, but if you don't have, you can go to the MongoDB website and download Mongo. Okay, so this should take care of the connection. Then we need to define a model. That's gonna be the object that's gonna be saved on MongoDB itself. We're gonna follow the same example and we're gonna create a schemas folder in the 
source directory. I can create a breed dot schema dot ts. We're gonna copy this example and change it for what we wanna do. So pasting that, we only need to change the cat document to be a dog document, a breed document, which is gonna be of type breed. This is a TypeScript specific, but you can also follow other examples on JavaScript alone. So this, what this is gonna do is to create a schema for Mongoose to be able to know how to save the, the data into the database. So our breed is gonna have a name and we can be all just for now, only a name for now. So now our schema is created. What we need next. Okay, so then what we have to do is on, we're gonna copy this line, which is the only thing we are missing on our module of the resource. So we go back to the breed dot module and on imports, we're gonna add this. Import the mongoose module and we're gonna say that. It's gonna have a module with the name of the breed name. Let's import breed from our schema. And the schema is gonna be the breed schema. Also imported from the file we created. Now, after our model is registered in the scope, we need to use the inject module for the service to be able to manipulate the documents of the collection directly. So for that, we're just gonna also copy this constructor. So if you go back to the breeds service, this is the guy that's gonna need the model injected into it. We're gonna import that decorator from the mongoose package, change for our schema name, which is breed, and the model also imported from mongoose is gonna be model after the breed document. And now we can just change this name for breed module so that we can use it within the service. Okay, once all of this is done, we should be able to create documents in our database. Now to be able to see the documents in my database and edit them if I need to, I use NoSQL Booster. I have a lot of databases already, but you can see that I don't have a Nest database. So Nest and the connection and the Mongoose ORM are gonna take care of that for me once I try to insert my first model. So let's try that first. If we go back to our breed service here on the create function, this is the function that's gonna be requested when we do a post to the breeds endpoint. We should do it like this way, you're gonna create a model from the model we have injected into the constructor, which is a document. Then we're gonna just hit save on that module. That's how Mongoose saves documents into the database. So first of all, we're gonna to need to be make this function asynchronous. And just for TypeScript, we're gonna specify the return of the function. That's gonna be a promise of, of a breed. So let's just have to change this. What we're gonna return is gonna be a new instance of the breed module created with the parameter that we are passing to the function. It's gonna be the body of the request and it's gonna hit save on this model. So we're now gonna run our nest app with start dev. This way, whenever you make a change to a, to a file, it's gonna auto compile and update the app, which is gonna come in handy later. So it's npm run start dev. You can see that it's just a script that it's in the package JSON of the, the project. That's gonna run nest with the command start and the watch flag. So now this is running, we can go back to postman. We're gonna make a post request to local 3000 slash breeds. And let's see what returns here. You can see it created a document already. So if you go back to our database and we refresh 
our local host, we can see we now have a new database in our server. And inside the database, we have a breeds collection and our object that we just created is just inside of here. So let's try and now create an object with a couple of attributes, right? Because we should need a name. I'm gonna go to body, set it to JSON, and you're gonna pass a name into the request. Name is gonna be Beagle, for example. And let's run this. The nest API returns our document, and if we go back and run again, we have two objects now. The empty one we created before, and the new one with the name Beagle. Now that everything's set up, the rest of the things should be easy to implement. When we return find all, we also have to make this a sync because it's now connected to Mongo. So now to return, since we have the connection to the model, we can just go this dot breed module, find, and hit save. Now this find all function is being called once we hit with the get on the route. It's gonna call the breed service dot find all. So let's on postman let's hit get on breeds. You can see that returns an array of the objects that we have inside it. Okay, now let's try and find a specific breed. For now, our get with a slash ID returns and a string with the number that we passed into it. Let's make it change that we pass a name in. It's gonna return it's gonna return the breed of that specific name. So this is gonna start getting a name which is of type string. What it's gonna do is go to the model and find one where the name is the name that we passed. So now on the controller, we just have to change what it passes to the controller because we're not gonna have this anymore. So this is gonna be name instead of ID, just to keep things organized. So now we should also change this all to name. I'm gonna remove this plus because we don't want to convert our string into a number. And if we go back and run here one, it should no longer return anything. It's empty. But if we pass in Beagle, we have the document that we created with where the name matches our query parameter. Now let's try put. Put is used for update normally. So let's do the same thing. Let's change this to receive the name. Remove here. And on the update function, change the ID for also a name, which is a string. And which should return this dot breed module. Update one where the name is the name we passed. And then we're gonna use uh, Mongo specific uh, things to update. Where we're gonna set the update breed DTO object. So everything that's gonna come on in the body, we're gonna update on our module with this specific name. So let's try that one. Let's create a new breed, for example. So we're gonna make a post with a name of Labrador, for example. So we now have a new document also, we can retrieve it. Labrador. And we can try and update it. So if we run a put method to our breeds Labrador and we change the body to have something else, for example, fur type. And you can say long. Just an example here. And if we send this, you can see that no change was made. And this is because if you go back to our breed schema, you can see that our breed only expects to have a name. The, the ID and the underscore V are all provided by Mongo, so they don't have to explicitly be declared. 
but it only is expecting a name on the document. So for anything else to be able to be persisted to our module, we need to create it here. Let's create a for type that's going to be also a string. If we go back to Postman again and try to make the same request, you can see that now we have a warning that one was modified. So we found one to match our query, tried to modify one and it got the okay. So now if you get the same search back, you can see that our document has a new attribute called fur type. The same thing here on the database, right? We have now name and fur type. So all we need now is to be able to delete it. So be able to use the delete HTTP method to delete our document. So we go back to the breeds controller. We change also the same, same thing here. We're using names just to simplify things, but it should also be using, should always be using the IDs of stuff. We're going to delete all of this, change it to name. And on the last one, just remove the cast to integer. On the serve, it's going to do the same thing. Name is of type string. And we're going to use the breed module to delete one matching our name. Let's just add a sync to all of this, which is the best practice. And go back to Postman. We now run delete with the same query here. The body is not necessary, just you can send none. And if we run this request, you can see the same results. We deleted one document that matched our query. So if we go back here, we are back to two documents, the empty one and the beagle one. You could do a lot more with Nest.js. For, and if you go to the documentation, they have it extremely well specified, but I'm also gonna go through another couple of topics on the channel, uh, further videos down the line. But for example, you can handle validation of the inputs that you're passing to the requests. If you want our request of creating a new breed to have a specific schema, so it has to have all of these parameters, they are required and they are the correct type. You can enforce all of that easily within Nest.js. Also things for caching, for logging errors into a specific file or another service file upload, sessions management, uh, you can serve also raw HTML or, or computer HTML through templates, engines. Nest.js is an incredible, incredibly powerful tool for server-side Node.js applications. And it's my favorite by far. So if you want to explore more of Nest.js, please go to the documentation everything it's extremely well explained here with a lot of examples techniques and suggestions if you want to follow the channel for more videos on this later we're going to create bigger apps we're going to create apps using microservices to communicate between services we're going to implement validations we're going to implement authentication of users creation of users using google auth everything else so if you are interested in that please stay tuned for the next videos also like the video down below because it's going to help me out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions regarding any of this or any other issues that you may encounter doing more advanced stuff with Nest.js, please leave a comment down below or also catch me up on Twitter. I'll be more than glad to try and help you. So till the next video, I can only wish you happy coding.